Um, she is what the super hearing comes closest to. She has launched a great movement that has made it easier for women to enter the development world using Angular. So, most important is that she is um, she's, uh, not kind of role model, she is a role model for many, many women I met, and she created a great um, uh, movement. This is not only a, a group, it's, a, it's a really it's a movement all over the world um, where, uh, we, where they have um, anti girls meetups and teaching girls and make them um, giving a comfortable place to start development using Angular. So this is very important because we need diversity. We need equal rights for everyone. This is important, you know this. We even um, Vitaly talked about some benefits of diversity because um, if you have someone who has a baby on his arm, this is a kind of a diversity because maybe you should think about these issues. So next on stage is, are you ready? Do you want to join? So I, I'm fine with this. Yeah, if everyone's fine with so it. So he is Nadav not can, fine. Nadav can join me on stage, that's okay. Okay, <laughs> next on stage is Let's try it. Nadav First time ever. and Shmuela about... <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Come over. Yeah, and here are the rock star and... <laughs> Hi, hello. And Hi, his mom. Look. Everyone's here for you. <laughs> talking about... RxJS and forms. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Go for it. Whenever you. you are ready. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> so it's so exciting to be here with Nadav. It's okay, Chagai. I think it's. I will concentrate. I can do multitasking having him on stage with me. <laughs> No, no, bring him, bring him. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I, I hope they come back. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm Shmuel. I'm, I'm so excited to be here in NG Spain. Uh, I really enjoyed the conference so far, and we've had really a uh, great NG Girls workshop. And please tell tell Hagai just to bring the dove in, and everything will be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, I, ca I still can't see my slides, so I can keep the oh here I am. <laughs> um, and we've had a really great uh, NG Girls workshop in the first day, in the workshop day, and I'm enjoying the conference so far uh, yesterday and today. And thank you so much for the great surprise also this morning. Uh, this is so exciting. Um, I got to, um, to talk to some of you, and I love the community here in Madrid. So uh, thank you for having me here. And um, so, what we're talking about, um, Angular uh, Forms and ArxJS, a little bit, a little bit about myself. Um, I work at Microsoft as a cloud developer advocate, and um, in the free time, I'm uh, running NG Girls, um, and um, a Google uh, developer expert, and what else? I need to look at this because my, my baby brain and stuff. <laughs> so this reminds me. Um, uh, these are pictures from one of the NG Girls workshops. If you're interested, please talk to me later. Um, and we'll start with the demo. Come on, come on Adam. Come on, come on. Help me with the demo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so Nadav, you're the demo that you built with me, that you helped me build, <laughs> is um, an app for uh, selecting seats, uh, for example, in a movie, in a theater, or in a conference like this, even though you didn't really have to select your seats here. So you, uh, you have a room with um, with the seats, the room configuration, the number of rows that you have uh, in each uh, row, the number of seats that you have. Maybe you have some special seats for uh, uh, disabled people or for children, so they have a different color. And um, 
you get real time uh, updates about the seats that have been occupied by someone else that you can't select them. Okay, so it, when you're selecting a seat, it becomes blue. Like um, you can see that it's selected, but you can't select the ones that are disabled. Uh, you can see that the count of the seats is being um, uh, increasing, uh, but sometimes uh, you might select a seat that someone has just, right now, just, um, here we have NG Payne again. Uh, <laughs> like yesterday. Um, sometimes you might select a seat that someone has just, just occupied, just selected by, by himself. And so we have an asynchronous validation. Um, just uh, going back from the server and said, oh, no, this seat was already selected. You get an error message that disappears after five seconds, and uh, you, the seat count um, it gets uh, the proper value. Let's see this again. So here we have the seat count going up, then down when it's unselected and uh, becoming disabled. You can also uh, close the error message before the five seconds um, uh, go uh, by. So this is the demo application. The way that I uh, implemented this might not be the way that you would do in your company in, in a real uh, application, but it gives a lot of ideas about how to work with Angular Forms and RxJS. Um, so let's see what we're talking about and uh, where are the forms here and where is the, uh, the stream, the RxJS. So the first thing that we have, the first piece of data is the room ID that we get from the router. Uh, we, we route to a specific room and we have the ID. So now we need to get from the room ID the data about the room itself, the room configuration. Uh, we get that from the server and then we build the form with the rows and the, uh, all the seats and the special seats. We might even uh, get at the same time the initially occupied seats that, uh, that are already known. <laughs> um, then we get, uh, we subscribe to real-time uh, updates about seats that are occupied and also seats uh, that are released in the meantime. So we get uh, both, uh, both uh, uh, types of uh, data. And we need to update this in the form. Then uh, when we select the seat, we have the asynchronous, uh, uh, asynchronous uh, uh, validation. And in the end, we save it. So that's another asynchronous uh, um, thing that we're, we're doing here. Um, and in the demo, I have in the, the code snippets. <laughs> no, bring it back. <laughs> it's OK. OK. <laughs> um, in, in the code the snippets, uh, you will see DB. So DB is the database service where I implement the um, actual methods that go to the database, to the server, and uh, bring the data back. But we don't need to really look at that implementation. So you just know that DB is the uh, database service uh, instance. Um, so why, why did I decide to do this as a form? What do we have in forms that helps us in this case? Um, so uh, first of all, we have user input. Okay, the user interacts with uh, with the, um, this uh, room configuration. Uh, so whenever we have a uh, user interacting, user inputting their data, their selection, then we might think about a form because the form really helps us um, get this uh, the, the new value and validate it and so on. So validation. I talked about the asynchronous validation. We might also have synchronous uh, validation. For example, um, if um, if the user selects uh, seats that are not adjacent to each other and we want to tell them, hey, you can't leave a gap here. Um, and when you, we have form controls, we can disable them and enable them according to the values or other logic that we have. So that's also useful in forms. Uh, we can get the data from the server and input it in, into the form and update the form, maybe use patch value to update the form values uh, in the most recent data that we got. And, um, and we can 
uh, of course, when we build the form, we also get data from the server that helps us build the form and the initial value. Um, and in the end, we're submitting the value that the user has uh, selected. We're submitted the, submitting the, um, a, the selected seats. So whenever the user submits something, we, again, it's really easy to think about a form in this case. And, <coughs> and we're talking about reactive uh, forms, but be before looking at what's so reactive in our forms, in Angular forms, well, um, let me ask you, what is uh, reactive? What is reactive programming? What, what is this concept? Um, and when you look in the, in the web and the internet, then there are a lot of tutorials of how to write reactive uh, uh, programming, uh, how to use the operators and so on, but it's uh, hard to find a source that tells you really what it is. And there are a few uh, sources like that, a few uh, people who try to define it. And one that I really liked is the introduction to reactive programming you've been missing uh, by Andres uh, uh, Stoltz. And he says, reactive programming is programming with asynchronous data streams. So you can think about everything uh, like a data stream. Uh, so it can be variables, it can be uh, the data that you get from the server, the data that you uh, get from the user, um, and so on. Like uh, Sometimes when you work too much with RxJS or, or uh, observables, you start seeing the world as <laughs> streams of things, of, as, as subjects. Uh, sometimes um, in the middle of the night, I start um, dreaming that Nadav's uh, cries are like a stream of cries. <laughs> and I can subscribe to them and maybe do something about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that bad, I know. <laughs> no, um, but um, yeah, you can really look at anything in the world it, as streams, so don't get too much involved with that because you, you can get a headache. <laughs> um, but streams are uh, really useful and in they have some uh, a few special things that you can do with them that you can't do uh, with other things uh, uh, like promises. And that's why I recommend using them in some cases. Of course, don't force it like I did with this demo app, but, uh, but there are uh, some very good things that uh, they allow you to do. So for example, you have one source that emits values and you, you can have multiple listeners to that source that can do something to react to the values that are emitted. And you don't need to think about uh, who's, who else is listening, who else is sub subscribed to that, because the value will not change. They can't affect each other. Okay? So I will see that, for example, with the, uh, the room um, uh, the room configuration, that we have uh, two places that will listen to that and do something with that. Uh, you have a lot of operators that help you transform whatever you get to something else and even to another stream. And with these operators, your code becomes cleaner and less nested than if you would try to do this, uh, these transformations by yourself. Um, you can combine streams and values. So you can have two different streams uh, or even 100 different streams and combine all of them to one and subscribe on only to that one and have all the op operators that you need, uh, filters, whatever. And you can close the stream. If you don't need the values anymore, if you don't need to listen to that, and then you close the stream and you can um, prevent memory leaks uh, and and so on. Uh, you can either do this by yourself when you when you want, or some streams close themselves. They just complete. They say, okay, this is, uh, I don't have any more values to to give to you, and that's it. You don't need to worry about it. So a lot of advantages, and there are more advantages, uh, as you saw uh, in uh, the talk yesterday uh, with Michael and uh, Jan uh, Nicholas. Um, and how to start with reactive like i know it's uh it might be a bit um 
intimidating like hundreds of op operators and what does every operator do and so my suggestion to you is just take it one step at a time. Just try one thing, see that it works, and maybe then learn another operator, uh, see whether it works. And uh, just try, if you need to implement something quickly, just try whatever works, and then maybe try to talk to the community and get uh, other suggestions to do the same thing. Um, Reactive forms in Angular. So they're called reactive forms. And I'm actually asking, how reactive are they? How much reactive are they? How many streams do we get in the Angular forms? Can we get, do we maybe want to get more streams? What do we get? What values do we get there? How should we handle them? And how can we utilize RxJS with the reactive forms that we have in Angular? OK. so. Uh, so what we're doing, so first we're getting the data, initializing the form, and uh, then we'll disable the controls uh, according to the real-time data that we get from the server. Uh, we validate the selection, uh, asynchronous validation in this talk, uh, and whenever there's, there's an error, we react, we react on this error and show the error message, and we count the selected seats, and all of these things are streams. So let's start. How do we initialize the form? Like I said, we have the route parameters, and we uh, and this is already um, um, a, a stream. The router gives us a stream that we can uh, uh, map or subscribe to and get the parameters themselves. So that's the first thing that we have here. From the ID that we got, we, the parameters are a stream, and we map it to just get the value of the room ID. We might have several parameters that we want, that we have there. So I just need the ID. And uh, then, because I'm, I need to make now a call to the server to get the room configuration, what I do is I take the, uh, the ID, and which I piped, uh, because I mapped from the uh, router, and um, I didn't just subscribe to it and get the ID itself, so it's actually still a stream of the IDs. So I take the stream, and I change it to another stream. And because it's an asynchronous uh, a function, then I'm switching map, because I'm getting back another observable of a, a get room, the get room observable. Okay, unlike the ID itself that, it, that I'm just simply mapping to the inner value of, a, of the value that I got in the stream. Then from, a, from the room configuration, one thing that I need is the room name, uh, which is displayed in the top of the page. Okay, so again, I can have a stream of the room name, and I'll get the value and display it on the page using the async pipe. And another thing that I do with the room configuration is I build the form. So the form will also be a stream, and we also subscribe to it using the async pipe. And uh, I just map the value of the room to the, uh, to the form itself that we'll see in a moment. So this is uh, an example of how you can have uh, one stream of the room and use it in to different uh, other new streams that don't uh, affect each other. Um, and so, so we get the room configuration, which has a room name and the rows, and each row has a, this array of the seats. And each seat um, has its type and whether it's occupied already or not. And from all of that, we need to build the form itself. And how would we do that? Um, well, before we get to the form itself, let's take a look at the seat control. So I created um, a, a custom control for the seat because it's not like any other control that we have, an input or a checkbox or so on, because there are other um, uh, things that I want to do with it, and it also has a different shape. Uh, so, uh, so you can see here that once I have the data, I can use the uh, data about the 
the data becomes the value of the control. And the value, I actually decided to have a, a lot of data there in the value, data that the user can't change, because um, if, if I only have whether the seat is selected or not, then when we do things like validation, and the validation comes from the control itself, the uh, control somehow we need to know the, the seat ID, which seat it is, to validate whether it's occupied or not. So it's not enough to know whether it's selected or not. Okay? So that's why I hold the row ID and seat ID, which are together the, the unique combination. And um, the seat type gives us the color that we give, a, maybe also a different price that we'll have for this seat. Um, and of course, the selected, which is what the user will change. Um, there's an option to also um, have as a value whether the seat is already occupied or not, but we'll do something else with that. Um, we will not save this as a value. Uh, we will just um, disable the control, disable the seat if it's occupied. So this will be our indication whether the seat is occupied already or not. Okay. Um, and to implement a custom control, I'm not going to get uh, uh, very much deep into this, but the documentation is really great. And if you if you just think that you need a custom control by yourself, um, you just implement the control value accessor. And it just needs uh, several implementations, and you have great um, examples in the source code of the forms uh, and uh, in other places also. And uh, basically what you need to implement is write value. What do you do when the value changes? And in this case also, because disabling and enabling the control is important, I also had to implement set disabled state. What do we do when I get uh, that this control has been disabled or enabled? Okay, um, um, creating the form now. So I get the, um, the uh, so remember we had the stream of the room configuration and then we map it and use this um, mapping function um, that just creates, well, you can use form builder, but I, I decided to do it more expi explicit and show how we really instantiate the form groups and form arrays. And there's another reason that I'm doing that. Okay, so I have the room configuration and uh, I uh, map it uh, to, um, um, to, the, uh, to the rows. Each row is an array, and, I, uh, and the rows are arrays of the seat controls. Okay? But I also hold the instance of the seat control when I create it so that I can do other stuff with it later on. Okay? And like I said, instead of uh, adding the occupied uh, value, I just tell it whether it's uh, uh, disabled or not. Um, okay? So um, so here I just removed the occupied value. And you see that I return in the end the seat control. And for disabling it, what I have to do, if I get the data immediately with the room configuration, then I have to split it. Instead of just uh, creating a new form control and just giving it the object of the value, I, sep I can give it uh, two parameters. The first, uh, well, an object with two values inside. One is the value of the, of the control, and the other one is disabled, whether it's disabled or not. Okay, uh, So that's something you can do right when you create this control. Um, okay, and how do we actually then disable the control if we get the data that the uh, seat control is occupied? Um, so um, we got this. Um, we we have this uh, data coming uh, with the seat update, where you have uh, maybe two ar arrays of occupied and released uh, seats, or maybe some other type of data, and then uh, you, uh, you can subscribe to this data to do something with it. So these are side effects of the form. And uh, so in the form, you have the get method where you can um, get a specific control. And this is very important uh, specifically because we're dealing with arrays here. So 
we use get with the IDs of the row ID and seat ID, which are uh, the indexes of the arrays that we need. And uh, so we have the room form. And then we can uh, we get the control, and then we can disable it or enable it. So uh, the same goes to oops, to enabling it, um, and emitting the event false because it might interfere with the counter if we uh, change the value uh, for enable and disabled. Uh, uh, you'll see the counter in a moment, and. Um, uh, and we're listening to the events, so we don't want to count these events in the counter. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so there is. Um, so in this example, I actually have the f the form that I created as a value in my uh, in my code, but there's another way to do that, and I will share the code with you after the talk. Um, there's another way to uh, still uh, have the stream um, of the of the form. Okay, uh, so this is the code. It's all in the controller, but that's just because it's a demo app. Uh, so we have this. Um, uh, we're creating here the form. But let me find where we're actually using it. Here it is. So seat select form, we're mapping to the form. And I'm, I'm using share replay because if I use, if I want to uh, use it uh, in the uh, page with the async pipe, and I want to use it again for getting the updates and updating the seats, then I need to have the same instance of the form. and. Uh, Otherwise, if I don't do share replay, then when I do updates on the um, uh, on the form, which is here with the data from the server, um, it will act on a different instance on the form that we don't see on the page. So, uh, so this way we can keep it as a stream, keep it um, as an observable, and still use it with uh, sharing the same. Um, Instance. Okay. Um, let me skip uh, this. Okay. So this means that you can't really use the disabled value when you're um, uh, when you patch the, a new value because it just doesn't exist in the implementation. Um, and you can also listen to value changes and um, subscribe to it. Validation. So the asynchronous validation is pretty uh, straightforward in Angular. Um, okay, uh, you just uh, add the asynchronous validation when you're uh, creating the control, but you can also um, create a asynchronous validation or any validation on the form array or form group and get it. Um, get its uh, value from there. Okay, so I'm not going deep into the implementation of. Uh, oops. Oh, what did I do? Okay. I don't want to go deep into in the in implementation of the asynchronous uh, validator, but let's just see um, how we can um, create this. Uh, validator and also react on changes and get the error uh, message okay so um so we need to uh, remember to return null if everything is fine and if it is occupied then we need to uh, give um a, a regular um object with the error function uh, error message inside or some error data okay and um, uh, and what we can do if we have a regular function, and that means that we have the data about the control from the control itself. And uh, I don't want to have data that's saved globally like this room ID. But remember that we have it as a stream. Okay, so we can just take the room ID again and switch map it 
uh, to get the data whether this uh, seat is occupied or not. Because in addition to the row ID and seat ID, we need to also know what room we're talking about. Um, what do we do when there's an error? Okay, so this seat is, a, is not a valid, and I want to show the error message and also um, disable the control and um, a, and a change the a selection, the number of selected uh, seats. Okay, so for this, I'm using a new subject for the errors, and uh, I will control when I emit the error message. And why do I do that? Because um, first of all, I want to map uh, relevant error messages, uh, relevant errors to messages that I have, and I want to also control like what error message we can see when, and I want it to um, disappear after five seconds. And the thing is that when uh, when we have the error of a seat that a seat is taken. Uh, a seat is occupied, then we're setting the value immediately of the same seat to be not selected and also disable it. But when we change the value, the asynchronous um, uh, function validation runs again, and then it says, hey, everything's fine because it's not selected. Okay, So it immediately gives, a, that gives us like a, a null uh, error, like there's no error. But I still want to see their error message for five seconds because I want the user to know that the seat was um, unselected and that they need to select another seat instead of that. Okay, so that's why I don't just use the error message that uh, I get from the control itself, but I create my own uh, subject for errors and um, I want to filter only the invalid values of the uh, of the form control and I can use set timeout or in my implementation there's even a better um, way that I got to do this um, mm -mm, here so I actually have uh, the error message uh, a stream and I'm piping it to filter first of all if there's a mess if there is an error and I map to a timer of fi five uh, seconds that emits zero, which is like a false or null, so that will close my error message. And uh, also I erase it with the user, if uh, the user clicks on the X to close it. And I merge this whole thing, okay, because that only deals with the timeout, I merge the whole thing with the error message itself. Uh, so I know that I don't have a lot of time uh, and and you probably want to look at this code, but I will share it uh, and I will uh, post a message on Twitter uh, for you to see the uh, code itself in the code base. Okay, so counting, uh, really, really quickly, I'm using here the scan operator uh, which accumulates uh, the values of the selected and unselected uh, seats. And this is why we need, you remember we used the uh, um, uh, not emitting the event, emit event false, because when we get data from the uh, server, this if we, if we emit the event, then it will affect here. We will get the, uh, uh, the event in value changes of the seat control, which is another stream that we get from Angular forms. Um, okay. This is what we had. But when we uh, have the asynchronous validation and we unselect the seat that, uh, that was occupied, then we do want to uh, emit the event and count that this uh, seat was unselected. So, well, I have a few notes here uh, saying um, uh, what, you, what you should uh, look at when you're using the reactive forms and things you should be aware of. Uh, but you will have my uh, slides also, and you can see that. Uh, and for summary, I just want to say that, yeah, uh, when you get into that, 
into forms and into RxJS, you suddenly find so much possibilities and uh, such fluent ways to do things. And uh, you might actually start enjoying that. And uh, I want to invite you to look at the repository that I'm going to share with you and see maybe you have better ideas to implement what I did there because there's always place for improvements and also I don't know all the hundreds of operators that uh, there are in RxJS and um, maybe you, you can try it out and see what works and, um, and how we can make it even better. Um, another, just a little point, it's great with testing. So use that for tests. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Michael Ladke uh, and uh, Jan uh, Mikkel uh, for uh, helping me with the, uh, with the code and uh, with all the RxJS issues here. And uh, again, I want to thank all of you for being here. I hope you, um, you got interested even more and learned something new. Who learned something new in this talk? OK, awesome. Wow. So thank you for this feedback. And I'm available here uh, if you want to ask me anything about this. Thank you so much. Wow. This was awesome. Uh,